Welcome Vintage Hollywood Archive. Vera Miles was a versatile blonde with a brain, who evolved gradually and beautifully. Not easily moldable by toxic bosses, possesses an undeniable talent that she gave even her best when she actually didn't want to. Why was Vera Miles the actress not to be messed with? Make sure to watch the video until the end, and if you are new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to our channel. Vera Miles, star of Psycho. Vera Miles was a beauty with a brain. Former actress, Vera Miles won the title of Miss Kansas, Miss Texas, and then Miss New Maid Margarine, but she is most remembered as Leela Crane of Psycho. Four times married Miles performed in various films and television shows and played different kinds of roles. However, if you mention Vera Miles today, most people will need context to remember this blonde beauty. That comes in one word, Psycho. The role is iconic today, but back in the day, it was a thankless role for an actress who was a star in her own right. Vera Miles was indeed beautiful and talented, but another prominent trait of her personality was her strong spirit. She lost her role in one movie, Vertigo, due to her pregnancy, but never regretted losing that role because she got a son out of the deal. She was too grounded, too smart and could smartly deal with annoying directors like Alfred Hitchcock. We will dig deeper into Miles' vast career and her versatile roles in a while, so keep watching. Vera Miles was born on 23rd August 1929 in Boise City, Oklahoma to Thomas and Bernice Ralston. She had three siblings. She grew up in Pratt, Kansas and later moved to Wichita. There she started working as an operator typist during the night for Western Union and served breakfast during the day at the YMCA cafeteria. She simultaneously graduated from Wichita North High School in 1947. It seems like the journey of an ordinary young ambitious girl, but indeed, she was not an ordinary girl who could remain unnoticed. When a manager of a modeling agency convinced her to enter a beauty contest, she proved herself and won the contest. She was crowned Miss Wichita and Miss Kansas in 1948 and later that year, she was the third runner-up in the Miss America contest. Later, when she appeared as a contestant on the April 4, 1951 edition of the Groucho Marx quiz show, You Bet Your Life, described as a beauty contest winner, Marx asked her about some of the titles she held. She replied, I was first Miss Chamber of Commerce, and then Miss Wichita, and then Miss Kansas and Miss Texas, and recently I've been chosen Miss New Maid Margarine and I had the honor to represent Kansas in the Miss America pageant. She was beautiful, she was intelligent, but her persona seemed practical rather than glamorous, energetic rather than sparkling. Maybe that's the reason why Vera Miles's personal life was not much striking, though her marriages were never long-lasting. She has been married four times. Her first husband, Bob Miles, a stuntman and a minor actor, moved along with her to Los Angeles, and she took his surname. They were married from 1948 to 1954, and they had two daughters, Deborah and Kelly. She met her second husband, actor Gordon Scott, when she was shooting for Tarzan's Hidden Jungle, and they married in 1956. They had a son from this marriage, Michael. The couple separated and ended their relationship in 1960. The third time, Miles married the director and actor, Keith Larson, in 1960. They have a son together called Eric Larson. Her third marriage lasted longer than the others, however, the couple divorced in 1971. Surprisingly, Miles' former husbands died within a short time of each other. Her third husband, Keith Larson, died on December 13, 2006, and her first husband, stuntman and small part actor Bob Miles, died on April 12, 2007, and second husband, a retired actor and bodybuilder Gordon Scott, died 18 days later on April 30, 2007. Well, then in 1973, Miles was married to her fourth husband, director Robert Jones, and the couple divorced in 1975. If we talk about Vera Miles' career growth, it is slow and steady. It all started when Vera Miles moved to Los Angeles in 1950 to build a career in show business and ended up in minor roles in television series and films. She played a chorus girl in the musical Two Tickets to Broadway. She decided to go by her husband's surname, Miles 
as there was another Vera Ralston in the industry at the time. An attractive composed woman who got a prominent start after placing third in the 1948 Miss America contest, rarely seemed to get the roles her talent deserved. She later starred in the romantic comedy The Rose Bowl Story, which was her first credited role. Attracting the attention of several producers, she was put under a contract at various studios where she posed for cheesecake and publicity photographs, as was standard procedure for most up-and-coming Hollywood starlets of the era. Under contract to Warner Brothers, Miles was cast in films such as Charge at the Feather River in 3D, in which she played Jeannie McKeever, a woman held captive by Indians. However, she lost out on doing a big 3D hit starring Vincent Price, House of Wax, for which she was considered. She once recalled, I was dropped by the best studios in town. In 1955, she was paired opposite Gordon Scott and she played Tarzan's love interest. She also kept herself busy in TV anthologies, where she first worked with the directors who gave her most important films. John Ford directed Miles in Rookie of the Year, an episode of Screen Director's Playhouse, which led him to cast her as an outspoken frontiers woman in his classic The Searchers. But again, it wasn't a major role that would throw away Vera to stardom. Those opportunities were to come, however, after Alfred Hitchcock saw some early footage of the movie and likened the statuesque blonde with a strong constitution and a magnetic screen presence to his ideal of a leading lady. Next, she performed in 23 Paces to Baker Street and The Wrong Man, which was directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock obviously saw in Miles a gift for quietly expressing maturity coping with great tension, and she was awarded a five-year contract deal with Hitchcock and was publicized as Grace Kelly's successor. It seems like a pleasant beginning, right? But it was not. Generally speaking, it's not easy being a star in Alfred Hitchcock's film. Hitchcock was quite a demanding director who would keep her actresses working with others and would try to control their lives. It would start with him wanting to choose his actress's hairstyle. Then, he would want to choose their clothes and their friends, and how many children they should have. Because he wants them to stay younger, slimmer, and beautiful. Vera Miles was beautiful. Vera Miles was talented. Vera Miles was not to be messed with. The only reason why Vera Miles never became a household name is that the man that intended to make her as such, Alfred Hitchcock, demanded her complete loyalty and admiration. Unlike other Hitchcock blondes, however, Vera was not one to take any control from the director and Hitchcock hated that fact. In The Wrong Man, which was a documentary-style suspense movie, Miles was a fantastic opposite Henry Fonda. But it was only to be a testing ground for Hitchcock to groom her into the kind of movie star he expected for all his female leads. Blonde, virtuous, always standing by her man and, ultimately, satisfying his ego by being obedient. Do you think Vera Miles could be that? No, she was not like that, and Hitchcock misjudged Vera Miles so badly. Of course, she was an actress with great looks and talent, but she also had the brains and willpower to resist his creepy advances and perverted sense of entitlement. It was only a matter of time before the two would come to blows. Their professional relationship started to deteriorate on the set of The Wrong Man, Hitchcock never spared any expense when it came to his leading ladies, and Vera was no exception. However, Miles gave the finest performance in the film, and her stardom seemed set. After that, she occasionally played second lead to a bigger star, Joan Crawford, in Autumn Leaves in 1956. Attempting to mold Miles to his classic icy blonde prototype, Hitchcock then cast her in Vertigo in 1958. For anyone who has ever seen the movie, the role required Vera to be the focus of an obsessive man who would ultimately lead to her death. Though she was married in 1958 to Gordon Scott and already had two children, Hitchcock still considered her his property. He obsessed over her looks both in public and private and determined that she should only wear white, black or grey clothes. A smart woman who didn't need to be told how autobiographical the material was for Hitchcock, Vera turned out to be pregnant with her third child before production could begin. Hitchcock was enraged and it resulted in Miles losing the role to Kim Novak. I have to confess that Kim Novak is one of the best casting choices in all of the films when it comes to Vertigo. Funny how everything worked out best, but Hitchcock would never forgive Vera for her misconduct, but he continued working with her. Finally, Miles' contract with Alfred Hitchcock ended with her career-defining role in the classic thriller Psycho in 1960. 
She played Lila Crane, a woman in search of her missing sister, played by Janet Lee, who has a horrifying encounter with Norman Bates, played by Anthony Perkins. The most interesting part is that Miles considered the role a walk-on part to get Hitchcock the hell out of her life. She was simply fulfilling her contractual obligation to Hitchcock, who no doubt cast her as a way to rub salt in any wounds left over from their meteoric fallout. Ironic, then, how it is the role that Vera is best remembered for to this day. She was very beautiful and at the top of her game. She played the role brilliantly, making her scream at the end when she finds Mother in the fruit cellar all the more horrifying. Miles was perfect casting and will always be remembered for this reaction. The movie became a fan favorite due to its screenplay and direction. Once again, fate played a hand in making film history. It was the last time Miles and Hitchcock worked together. Apparently, Miles didn't want to work with him anymore. Throughout her career, the actress played various contrasting characters. In a 1958 interview, she explained that she refused to be pigeonholed. She revealed that she did not want to rely on her looks, stating she was much more interested in becoming an actress rather than a physical actress. She also noted that she had a desire to play all different sorts of roles. I hate very much just being a respectable type or, on the other hand, I would hate very much to be a romantic type actress or a Shakespearean type actress. You know, we all want a bit of variety. At the start of 1962, she returned to John Ford's productions and starred in the film, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valence. So, throughout the 1960s, she regularly appeared on TV series, which also included The Fugitive, and guest starred in The Outer Limits, The Eleventh Hour, The Man from Uncle, Burke's Law, and Ironside. She also guest starred on Rawhide with Clint Eastwood before she returned to Walt Disney Studio. Miles made six films for Disney Studios over the next eight years, including Follow Me Boys in 1966. She made Hellfighters in 1968. She was also cast in the movie The Green Berets, but her scenes were decided to be shelves by Warner Brothers as they wanted more action in the film. Miles's performances in the 1970s were equally diversified and extensive, including her role as an ex-girlfriend of the investigator in the TV series Canon. She made two guest appearances later in the series. Her other works include Columbo, Hawaii Five-0, The Streets of San Francisco, and Fantasy Island. She was also signed to play the wife of the U.S. president in Twilight's Last Gleaming in 1977, but the director Robert Aldrich had to cut her scenes as he deemed the film to be too long. The list of her numerous roles sounds quite overwhelming, right? That's why it's hard to define which role suits her best. Her appearance in movies and TV series continued to remain steady in the early 1980s and gradually decreased later. She played in Brainwaves, The Initiation, and Into the Night. In 1983, more than 20 years after Psycho, Miles returned to the role that made her famous, Leela Crane, in Psycho 2, joining Anthony Perkins in the sequel. She was one of the two stars from the original film who were part of the second season. The movie was directed by Australian director Richard Franklin. Vera Miles was a professional actress for only 12 more years following the premiere of Psycho 2. Her TV appearances in the 1980s include various episodes in The Love Boat and Hotel. She also made three guest appearances in the TV series Murder, She Wrote. Her last film role was as Dr. Ruth Golden in 1995's Separate Lives, where she starred along Jim Belushi, Elizabeth Moss, and Linda Hamilton. She was also awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1960 for her services in cinema. After her retirement in 1995, she avoids making any public experiences and does not grant any interview requests. However, in 2019, filmmaker Ted Gagan shared on Twitter that Miles still loves hearing from her fans. No doubt, her versatility and charming appearance continue to be praised even today. Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Until then, stay tuned. Vera Miles was a grounded and smart actress you don't want to mess with. She didn't let her career controlled by directors and the industry. Not many actresses can say this about themselves. This was the case with Natalie Wood. Watch this video to understand how Natalie Wood's fame destroyed her.